I love the picture. Go to his website and check out his desk. It's really cool. It's an interactive yeah. desk. You <laughs> click on the different items that it tells you the story. Yeah, it's great. It's, I, I love that. You might steal that idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, in uh, the thriller genre, it's been said that the villain drives the plot. And your villains are forces. They act, they're frightening to me. How? Uh, what is your advice for writing an effective villain? So. It's not always the case that you have to have a great villain, I think. I mean, it's about the, the hero's story, and there can be setbacks. In, in some very interesting thrillers, we don't meet the bad guy until toward the end. So you haven't had a chance to sort of set up the, the characterization of the villain. So that's why whenever you hear villain, give the villain the interesting, the most important, the most plausible arguments, mm -hmm or make the villain the most interesting character, you can't always do that, because the villain sometimes is pretty much off stage. But when I do a villain, um, obviously you want to avoid, you know, snidely whiplash, twirling mustache. <laughs> uh, you want to make it someone who absolutely has a, who also who thinks he is the hero of his own life. And the villain does not think of himself as a villain. It's not like, you know, Dr. Evil. You know, a villain has to be someone who has a, a real legitimate reason for doing what he's doing. Very often it's revenge, very often it's, it's, it's simple greed. But whatever it is, in his mind he's justified. Or she is justified. So that you really have to believe in the villain. Not as a force of evil, but as someone who is antagonistic to what the hero is trying to do. A villain does not have to be an evil person, but someone whose actions are, are in fact, evil. So, uh, I mean, in Killer Instinct, for example, there is a, a villain in there who starts out as sort of a good guy. He's a buddy, he's a friend <coughs> of Jason, the heroes. And then slowly, the villain, uh, this, this guy, uh, slowly he becomes a little scary uh, villain. And, I realized I read a script, an early script of it. There, this is in quote unquote development as a movie, which by the way means nothing. <laughs> uh, but uh, I read an early script, and what they did was they took Kurt, that's the Kurt Semko, who's the bad guy in Killer Instinct, and they wanted to make the movie scary in the beginning. So we have Kurt doing bad, scary things early on. And for some reason, all the reads they got from the studios were. We don't, we don't believe the villain. So I read this and I said, well, you know why? Because he doesn't start out as a villain. He's got to start out as a friend, as an ally. And this explains the motivation. His motivation is that he felt spurned by the hero. It's kind of, you know, it's a romance story turned evil. It's not going to work until we see what twisted him around. So that's why I say you don't always start off with the villain in a static way. The villain can emerge that way as well. 